الله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد ذي القدر العظيم وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان وهدى إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين وجعلنا من عبادك المتقين الصادقين يا أكرم الأكرمين أما بعد it has come from our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that inna lillahi fi ayyami dahrikum lanafahat fata'arradu laha that truly in the days of your lifetime there are from Allah breezes of divine assistance so turn yourself towards those breezes there are in the days of your life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breezes of divine assistance nafahat so turn yourself towards them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed particular assistance in certain actions and in certain times and in certain places and in certain people certain times such as the noble day of Jumu'ah and most particularly the time of the Friday prayer. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned about the great virtues of certain days of the year. Amongst those days is the day of Ashura, the 10th of this Islamic month that we're in the 10th of Muharram. Likewise, we have Ramadan, we have days in which there's opportunities, we have circumstances in which there's opportunities from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are, to use a beautiful prophetic expression, nafahat, they're breezes of divine assistance. If you turn to that opportunity, you, and turn with it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's an opportunity of great good. And we have such opportunities sometimes coming up in our lives. You find out, for example, that someone was in an accident. And you can get there to the hospital to be with them before someone else. That's an opportunity for you. Of what? Of directing yourself to the breeze of divine assistance. Because when you're in the aid of Another, Allah will be in your aid, as the Prophet ﷺ said. That, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا دَامَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِي Allah is in the aid of His servant, as long as His servant is in the aid of others. And this is one of the reasons that we listen to the news. Why should a believer listen to the news? It's not simply to hear what's going on. Because that's mere idle curiosity. But you want to gain an understanding and see what, what can you do of the good. So for example, you find out that there are 6 million refugees plus now in Syria. Many of them internally displaced and many in the countries surrounding it, which are not wealthy countries. Lebanon, which is a very troubled country, has taken in over a million Syrian refugees. Jordan, which is a small country, has taken... Um, at least a tenth of its population worth of refugees. It's a country of only six million people. And it's not a wealthy country. It's one of the countries in the world that has the least water per capita of any country. Yet, they've taken at least half a million, some estimates, much more than that, of refugees. About a tenth of its own population worth of refugees. But they're struggling. They're living in camps. And when you hear about things like that, you, you watch some documentary about the Zaatari camp in Jordan. What do, you, what do we do about it? And you can sit back and be an armchair critic that, well, what are the Americans doing? What are, what are the rich Gulf countries doing? What are these people doing? What are those people doing? And that may feel good. But what does, what does that mean? The believer considers, what can I do about it? And if you're able to raise political awareness, to do something big, then go ahead and do it. But if you can't do something big, 
That is of benefit. Look at what you can do. And one of the things one can do is to give in charity, to make dua. Charity is an expression of practical concern. Dua is an expression of spiritual concern. And these are opportunities that arise. There are opportunities that arise to do good. And one should direct oneself to them. And just like we follow the news, one of the things that the believer always does is we go back to the great news. The great news. And Naba ul Azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Quran as the great news. Amma yatasa'alun. What are they asking each other about? Anin Naba il Azim about the great news. Because it's informing you. For what purpose? So that you make the right choices in life and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going forward. But it also gives you news of the people before us, what we did not know about the people before us. Why? So that we can see the choices that they made. So that we can be informed about the right choices, the choices of those beloved to Allah, and the wrong choices, the choices of those who lost out in life. And very intriguingly, it's a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that great events in history happen in clusters. And one of those great days in history is the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. It has come in hadith that this is the day when Sayyidina Adam was forgiven. This is the day when Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam was saved. This is the, the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the people of Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam. This all come to us from the Prophet sallallahu in various narrations. And other great events are mentioned. We know from the hadith in Sahih, Muslim, in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim that this is the day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Sayyidina Musa and Bani Israel from the oppression that they were in. And this was a day that had many, many other great virtues that were recognized by the Jews of Medina. But even before that, the monotheists in Mecca and the Christians who were around, they all recognized that there's something special about this day. So even in the Jahili period, in the pre-Islamic period, Quraysh used to consider this a great day. Quraysh themselves used to consider this a great day and they used to do a type of fasting on that day. Before Islam. Because they considered this a great day. And the Prophet wasallam used to fast Ashura even before migrating to Medina. Because of this. Because it was an auspicious day. And it was a day where people did good. They fasted. So he used to fast as well. And then when they got to Medina, they found out that the Jews of Medina would fast that day. And he asked, why are they fasting? He said, because this is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people. So the Prophet ﷺ said, we are even more deserving of Musa than they are. So he encouraged all the believers to fast that day. And however, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged them after to fast either the 9th of Muharram with it, if able to, or the 11th. Because the believer does recognize the good of others, even in their practices. But one adopts it in a manner that is distinct and according with our values. Because someone that great day, you could do other things on that day. But the, the Prophet adopted the distinct way of fasting of the Muslims. And they did it in a manner that was their own. So that he encouraged us to fast the 9th and either the 9th and the 10th or the 10th and the 11th. This is, and he gave us many teachings 
of good related to that day. That this is, a, this is an auspicious day. This is a day of particular divine concern. So in the spirit of Allah has in the days of your lives, breaths of divine assistance, nafahat. So turn to them. So it's encouraged not only to fast on the day of the 10th of Muharram, but it's come that it's particularly virtuous to give in charity as well. Particularly virtuous to give in charity. It is also very virtuous on this day. And this is, there's some hadiths about this, but this became a well-established practice of the first generations of Muslims, of the Salaf, as mentioned by Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali and others in their works on the virtues of the days of the year. To spend expansively on one's family. And the men may not like to hear this so much, but it is from the Sunnah on the 10th of Muharram to spend expansively, to spend expansively on one's family. Expansively doesn't mean extravagantly. But one may get, you know, for example, get them a nice meal. If you're going to, we're going to get a gift for someone, this is a day to give, a gift, you know, to, to give that gift, etc., to, to spend. Why? Because one of the ways to seek increase from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spending in ways of good. Out of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is one of those days where Allah lifts up His servants. And this is manifest throughout the year. So this is one of those days where it's an opportunity to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for increase. But how does one do that? One fasts oneself, but one, it's a day to give in charity, widely. It's a day to spend expansively on one's family, to share in that blessing. You may have difficulties in your, in your own family. This is a day to say, okay, this is an opportunity. To, to, to fix things up, to reconnect with relatives, others. So it's a very special day. And the believer plans. The believer plans. You know, if you talk to people who, who get vacation time in, during the winter break, for example, they've been planning since... Yeah, I know my, my younger brother, he's been planning what, what he's going to do in, in his winter break since summertime. Because people plan, plan ahead. But we should also plan ahead for our religious opportunities. That okay, the tenth of Muharram is like, what am I going to do to, to make the most of this great and auspicious day? Which is a day where Allah favors those servants who make the right choices. So we have days till the tenth of Muharram. This is an opportunity to think about how we prepare ourselves for that day and build up the momentum to try to make the most of one's day. The great early Muslims and the righteous throughout the year, they would take their holidays, not official holidays, like a break from work, etc. When? On these special days. And that's one of the things that one should try to make a commitment for. That, and of course, don't call in sick if you're not. Like take a legit break. Like you, take, you have, a, you have vacation time, etc. One of the things to use it on, use it for the... During the last 10 days of Ramadan, use it for the 10th of Muharram. Use it in the other special days of the year. Or you know, for example, some great, great conference is coming that you would wish you could attend, but you typically work. So you adjust your schedule, not both for your worldly interests. You want to go visit family overseas or do this and that. And that is a recognized good in our deen. And it's a great work of Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure by reconnecting with family, by giving one's own spouse and children a break and a vacation, etc. But one also plans for these religious benefits. And one of these great days is the day of Ashura. If you can't take, take the day off, then at least, for example, say, okay, I'll sleep early the night before and stay up after Fajr, engaging in some extra acts of worship. I'll make sure by going to sleep early, etc., that I am able to get up with my family for iftar and to make these days of the year memorable days. So the whole plan, family plans, okay, let's go to sleep early, let's have our iftar ready and make it a beautiful, memorable day. And don't give a long lecture to bore your whole family, but remind them of the greatness of this day and the great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and on those reminders of history of what has happened on, on this day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance to his servants and his granting victory. The, the story of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Fir'aun, uh, Sayyidina Musa and Fir'aun, astaghfirullah, of the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting the most unexpected of victories to Sayyidina Musa and his people. And they're fleeing and uh, the, the, the army of Fir'aun was behind them. And they would have been caught and slaughtered. Fir'aun's army was, was a ve- the most powerful army, arguably, in the world at that time. And they're chasing them. They had horses and, and all kinds of other equipment. And when they reached the Dead Sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala parted the Dead Sea for Musa and his people. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory comes. It doesn't come on our terms, it comes on His terms, in the way that He deems fit. But to whom? To those worthy, to those worthy of it. And that's one of the lessons of this day. And this sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested itself beyond the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one of the great moments and lessons in Islamic history, the, the 10th of Muharram is also the day in which the, the, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina al-Husayn, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was martyred with much of his family, of the prophetic household at Karbala. And there's many lessons in that. Because we, we view that killing of Sayyidina al-Husayn not as a great loss. We do not see it as an occasion of great sorrow. Rather, we see this as a tremendous honor bequeathed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because martyrdom is of the highest of ranks. Is of the highest of ranks. And he died upholding truth, upholding justice, standing up to tyranny and wrongdoing. And in that stance that one takes a noble, principled stance, even if one knows one's going to lose. There are numerous lessons for us. There are numerous lessons. You may not be faced with that degree of a calamity, but you may find a lesser struggle. You may find a lesser struggle. Someone I know personally, at the local mall, there, which is where everyone in our, in our neighborhood goes and shops, they're going to open a pub. So they started a petition. That in, in a mall where you have, you know, where you have families going, etc., to have an all-day pub. And they got many petitions, etc., and they, they changed the name of the restaurant from, from pub to a family restaurant. They still serve alcohol, but they don't promote it as a pub. It makes a slight difference. One does what one can in the situations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates, because the believer cares about the good. Right? They stand up for the good. Not just in doing good themselves, but the lessons we see from the, from the prophets before us, the, the righteous, the great, they care about the social good, the political good, the good of others. And they stand up for it in the right way. And that's one of the great lessons from what happened to Sayyidina Hussein and those with him. And we should be familiar with our history. We should know intimately the lives of the prophets. And we should nurture the, the knowledge and understanding of the lives of the, of the past prophets, the lives of the great companions and prophetic household and the righteous of this ummah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us that, اِتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ Follow the path of those who have turned to me. Truly, inaba is true turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that path? That path is the path of the prophets, the path of the righteous. How can you know what is their path unless you study it, you read it? So we should familiarize ourselves. Like when we read, when we recite the Quran, we should make a commitment every once in a while to dip into the works of tafsir and read about the background and context of the great stories of the Qur'an, the stories of Sayyidina Musa and, and Harun, the stories of Sayyidina Ibrahim with his people, the other great 
stories in the Qadr, story of Sayyidina Yusuf. We should make a commitment. And it's a new Islamic year and one renews one's commitments when things like this happen. That I want to, I want to read at, at least one complete book about the stories of the prophets. This is not just something for little kids to read. The whole reason there's a tradition of ki- children reading about the prophets because that from the get-go we should all be learning about the prophets and th- their example should be alive in our lives. So then when we have the difficult choices to make, we have that light, not just as an, as an abstract light that yes, I believe and I want to do the right thing, but we have embodied examples of right choices of those who have come before us. And this is very critical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this right in Surah Al-Fatiha. When we ask to be guided to the straight path, we say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those whom you have blessed before us. And they say, in order to go straight, going forward, you need to know about the example of those who went straight before you. Of those who went straight before us. So this should be a commitment every one of us makes. And in our families, we spend on all kinds of things. Since, you know, I live in Mississauga, and since Afis came to Mississauga, there's all these people, need to take, need to go to Afis. Like it's like, you know, people say, need to go to Hajj, need to go to Afis, need to go here, need to do this. The aquarium opens downtown Toronto. Need to go to the aquarium. But they say, you know, there's a really good set of books about the lives of the prophets. It's, it's three volumes. Say, so how much is it? Say, oh, it's $40. Oh, that's so expensive. And you just spent $300 at the aquarium with the family. Nothing wrong with going to the aquarium. Apparently it's really good. But we should have a sense of priorities as well. Right? That we should be willing to, to spend in the ways of good, to seek benefit, to seek benefit. And one should build a library at home of, of books that enable us to seek that benefit. And encourage, and you have, you, you have, alhamdulillah, now all over the city, whether this is your local mosque or other mosques, you have mosques, alhamdulillah, we have teachers in our communities. We should, we should be de- de- demanding, we should be asking for programming for our children programming for ourselves so that we can gain a deeper understanding of the deen. Because as the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Whomever Allah wishes well for, He grants deep understanding of religion. And that is a constant. And why do we seek deep understanding of the religion? Not because it's just a nice thing to do. Not because you, you, know, you, you know about Islamic trivia. Not so that you can throw facts in family gatherings. That guess what happened to Sayyidina Musa? And you give the volunteer lecture that no one wanted to hear. But rather, right, so we, that deep understanding serves as a light. So that in our life, we know what we should be doing. We can set our priorities with a higher standard. And when tested, we can make the right choices. When tested, so that we can make the right choices. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who illuminate our lives through the re- renewal of our faith, through learning about and reflecting upon those who've come before us, but taking heed from that so that we can direct ourselves to that path of high resolve and high concern for Allah and consciousness of Allah and making the right choices that they took so that we too can be guided and honored and favored and drawn close as they were. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم مبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. الحمد لله. One of the lessons from those past prophets and how they were honored on this day and of the prophetic practice related to the month of to the day of Ashura is this sense of neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
of neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To whom does Allah answer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He is the one who answers the dua of the desperate when they call upon Him. يُجِبُ دُعَاءَ الْمُطَّرِّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ And اِتْتِرَارُ Desperation is of two types. You can be just in a general desperate state that befalls you. Right? You got in an accident, you have an exam, you're about to go and propose to Sister Zubaydah's, you are to asking her father for her hand in marriage, or Zubair's coming to ask your father if he can marry you and you're worried and desperate and you make a lot of dua, that's one situation. But the other desperation is when you recognize the reality that at every moment we are in desperate need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we express that? We express that through turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. In general, anytime you recognize your neediness to Allah, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. On the 10th of Muharram specifically, the central act of worship on, on that day is, is fasting. So put it on your calendars. 10th of Muharram, make a commitment to fast and plan so that you are able to do it in the best of ways. Gather your family to doing that. Remind yourselves and your families in a beautiful way of the great merits of this day and also of some of the great historical events that took place on this day. And use it as a time of reflection that how can I return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The answer is obvious. And you, but you need to nurture within yourself the capacity to be able to make those right choices. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to the, best of, to the best of responses to the opportunities and challenges that He sends to us. And may we illuminate our lives by the light of the example of our own beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa and those who've come before him of the great prophets and messengers and righteous, and those who have walked on the footsteps of our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the, the most virtuous of this ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who strive for virtue and excellence, who don't just find sufficiency in our lives just to be plain vanilla Muslims, but who strive to be of the righteous, who strive to be of the sabiqeen, of the foremost of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants. So we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنٍ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا O Lord, grant us in our spouses and in our offspring a joy for our eyes and make us and them of the foremost, of the foremost of your servants. Those who are of the muttaqeen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you Allah that we strive for the highest of good, the highest of virtue, the highest of excellence in our worship and our conduct in our life. We ask you O Allah that we lead lives of no, noble purpose, that we direct ourselves in our work to work with excellence, to direct ourselves in our careers, to make the choices that will make us of the greatest benefit to your creation. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that we... we do all that we do in the most beautiful of ways, the ways most consonant with the radiant example of your beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask you that we be ever appreciative of the tremendous gift of mercy and good that you have gifted us with by sending us our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we say out of gratitude and love, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim. اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا إنك قريب سميع مجيب الدعوات يا أرحم الراحمين يا حنان يا منان يا ذا الجود والإحسان يا أكرم الأكرمين والله we ask you that you grant relief and assistance and support to those in difficulty and distress, both right here in our own community and in the city that we live in and this country that we're in and wherever people may be in difficulty and distress. And we ask you, Allah, to make us of those who have concern for others and express that concern through making the choices to, to give and to support and to assist and to pray for others. And we ask you, Allah, not to make us simply of those who, who prattle and talk, yet do little ourselves. We ask you, O oh Allah, that you, you make us of those who seek to gain increase in our knowledge of 
the example and embodiment of mercy that is your beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we ask you that you make us ourselves embodiments of mercy in our dealings with others in our relationships with our parents and our spouses and our children ya rabbal alamin we ask you that we embrace the gentle beautiful way of your beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was firm on the truth yet was never harsh even with his enemies sallallahu alaihi wasallam we ask you that you grant us that deep prophetic concern by which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed even for those who were trying to kill him in battle ya rabbal alamin as he said at mount uhud wiping blood from his face kayfa yuflihu qaumun adma'u wajha nabiyyihim wa huwa yad'uhum ila al-janna that we ask you that you grant us of the spirit of your beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam who on mount uhud after quraysh counter attacked and he got hurt sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was wiping blood off his face and praying for those trying to kill him that oh allah how can a people attain true success falah when they make the face of their prophet flow with blood when he is only calling them to paradise we ask you that you place that depth of mercy and beautiful concern in our lives so that we illuminate our lives with that beautiful light of your beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we ask you that you preserve the good for us and our parents and our families and our community and the society that we live in and that you facilitate relief for all those in distress particularly those in situations of crisis in Syria and Burma and Egypt and across the world ya rabbal alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayidina wa nabiyyina muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما وأخذ دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة